please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will start with approval of the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Uh, oh, are there any additions or corrections? To no, the, the agenda is um, appropriate as is. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve? Madam President. Uh, Gary. Me? Gary. 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 Okay. Uh, Madam President, I move we approve the agenda as presented. Thank and you. Emma Doherty, second. Second by Emma. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried, 7-0. The next uh, on our agenda is the budget hearing. Um, Lisa, do you need to present on that? Uh, okay, we'll, we Just will now... Just go ahead and read that we'll okay. open. We'll now open the budget hearing for the purpose of hearing and answering questions or answering, answering objections of taxpayers relating to the proposed use of funds and the amount of tax to be levied. No Madam comments? President. Yes, Nedra. I recommend that we approve the 2019-2020 budget as published. So you're moving that we approve the budget. Do I hear a second? Second. Jim. Second by Jim. Any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We uh, don't believe we have any recognitions or... Uh, Presentations tonight, correct? Correct. All right. Then we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, just a minute, please. Okay. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the July 9th, 2019 regular meeting, the minutes of the July 31st, 2019 special meeting, minutes of the July... 31st, 2019 special meeting, minutes of the August 1st, 2019 special meeting, the personnel report, financial reports, which include the July bills list and the July bond bills list, the bond budget summary, the treasurer's report for June, the investment report for June, uh, approval of encumbrance listings, which include to Hand to hand, hand to mind for supplemental math materials for grades K through five in the amount of sixty-four thousand five hundred seventy-nine dollars and eighty-six cents, and to ISI Industrial Services for the remediation of asbestos at fifteen eleven Gypsum in the amount of twenty-three thousand dollars, twenty-three thousand one hundred sixty dollars, and to approve the 2019-2020 school resource officer agreement for 3.5 officers with the compensation rate to remain at the same level as the 2018-2019 school year, which was $285.42 per full day and $142.71 per half day. Do I hear a motion to? Madam President. Yes. I move that we approve the encumbrance listings as presented. The. Madam President. Yes. Second. Is it should be a consent agenda? Is it just that or the whole consent? The whole consent. Okay. I'm sorry. I was reading from the wrong spot. Okay. okay. Uh, Nedra, you have a second to that motion? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. 7 0. Next is the public forum. If there's anyone here who would like to present, uh, you may come forward at this time. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. We go on to the action agenda, which starts with the bond refinancing. So Greg Varnberg is here to present. Go ahead, Mr. Varnberg. Good afternoon, 
everyone. Um, again, Greg Varenberg uh, with Raymond James. Appreciate the opportunity to be here uh, with you this afternoon. And uh, wanted to share with you a, a bond refinancing opportunity, which I know the district has a history of taking advantage of low interest rates and capturing the savings for the taxpayers. And it's interesting that when um, if you look back over the period of time that I've had the opportunity to work with the district, um, you've been able to capture uh, savings nine different times uh, when interest rates were low. And when we do a refinancing, we can go in and refinance just a select portion of the outstanding bonds, just the portion that's advantageous uh, to refinance. And so your total uh, cumulative savings is $5,255,000, and those are uh, tax dollars that stay in the community rather than being paid out to bond investors. And those nine different opportunities, the savings ranged from uh, the lowest refinancing had 216,000. Uh, the highest savings had a little over 1 million. It was 1 million, 1,163 dollars. And again, that totals the 5 million, 255,000. And I thought it was, would be good to, to share with you that recap as you think about this opportunity because any savings would add to that 5.2 million but it's also interesting to think about those savings that you've captured in relation to uh, the bond elections. And I think back to the 98 bond election and 2014 bond election, and you're making representation to the voters about what the mill levy will be. And I think uh, pretty much every year um, from those elections, you've been able to set the mill levy lower than what was anticipated. Um, part of that is due to taking advantage of low interest rates and reducing your, your debt service expense. Um, so it, it's a, a little bit surprising that this opportunity presented itself uh, during two, 2019 because coming into this year, uh, a lot of the economists were saying that we would see gradual increase in rates and it's been anything but that. It's been a fairly steady decline in rates throughout the year. With the exception of just the last few weeks, it's been a pretty dramatic decline. Um, and to put that in perspective, the 10-year uh, Treasury note, which is what uh, we often use as a benchmark for interest rates in the bond industry, um, in November of 2018, it was 3.3%. And, you know, again, those economists were saying that, you know, by the end of 2019, many of them were predicting 3.4 or 3.5 would be the ending interest rate. So fairly stable, but gradual increases were predicted. Uh, but Two weeks ago, it hit 2.05 percent, a very dramatic drop, and then it's continued since then to 1.65 percent, which oddly enough, you think about it, the rate today is half of what it was just, you know, eight or nine months ago. Um, so that has led to um, a lot of issuers looking at outstanding bonds to see if there's an opportunity to take advantage of those lower interest rates. Uh, that led us to meet with your administration uh, to share an opportunity related to the 2014 bonds um, and the analysis that we had shared with you and I believe, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay, is that better? Yeah. Sorry. sorry about that. Um, the analysis that was shared with the board uh, shows a savings of 2,711,000 and I believe that was included in your, your board uh, packet. Um, and what we're looking at is a portion of those 2014 bonds, uh, primarily in the years 2028 through 2034. But I would say that as interest rates move, um, the bonds that make sense to refinance may change. And so the size of the issue may change, but also that final savings may change. In other words, we only want to refinance the portion of the bonds that is the most efficient, the most advantageous, and if bonds have marginal savings or no savings, then we'll leave that portion of the bond issue outstanding, and, and there's no benefit to the district, there's no reason to refinance it. Um, but the interest rates on the outstanding bonds that we're looking at refinancing have an average rate of 4.28%, and in the current bond market, um, we're estimating that the new interest rate would be 2.88 percent. So it would be a reduction of 140 basis points or, or 1.4 percent. And it's obviously that 
lowering of the interest rate, which is what drives the savings. Um, anytime we do a refunding bond issue, we're actually going out and selling a new series of bonds to investors at, at low interest rates, taking the proceeds of the new bond issue and using that to pay off your old bonds. And it's important to note that all of the costs associated with selling the new bond issue are paid out of the, the proceeds of the new bond issue. And so when we compare the payments on the new bond issue to the bonds that we're, we're refinancing, um, that savings is net of all cost, and uh, that 2.7 million estimate is the actual amount that the district would save over the life of the issue. And so when you look at our savings report in the board packet that was sent out, um, the prior debt service column does not show all of the outstanding bonds. It's just showing the payments on that portion of bonds that we feel makes sense to consider refinancing, and then we're comparing what you would have paid on that portion to what your new payments would be on the new issue at that <coughs> estimated rate of 2.88%, and that's how we calculate that savings. And uh, that prior debt service column, again, relates to just the portion of the bonds that we would be refinancing. Um, the process that we go through, um, as some of you may recall, uh, from the board's perspective, I like to think of it as really a two-step process. The first step is deciding if you want to move forward with the refinancing and if so, then you would give us permission to work with your bond attorney um, in the form of adopting the authorizing resolution. And the authorizing resolution doesn't obligate you to accept the results of the refinancing. Um, if interest rates go up and we miss this opportunity um, and we just never move forward with the refinancing, then um, there's no cost to the district or there's no obligation for you to accept a, a lower savings or no savings. Uh, but assuming rates remain favorable and we're able to, to bring back a level of savings that is uh, acceptable to the district, then the second step from your perspective would be adopting the bond resolution. The first step is the authorizing resolution. The second step, the bond resolution. And in the bond resolution, we'll have the final interest rates and the new amounts of the refunding bond issue. And at, at that point, the savings would be locked in. Um, so the, the typical process that we go through, uh, once we have the authorization from the board to proceed, we'll have the bond rating assigned, the preliminary official statement or prospectus will be given to investors, and uh, then um, that usually takes two to three weeks. And so at that point in time, we would be in a position that it, if rates are favorable, we could lock, lock in the savings and then come back to you at your next uh, board meeting whenever that date would be for that bond resolution. So wanted to make you aware of this opportunity. Um, if we were able to lock in a savings of 2.7, um, thinking back to you know all of those times we were so proud of building up to 5.2, this would be a giant step towards a larger number um, if we were able to lock in that level of savings. So wanted to make you aware of this opportunity and see if it's something that the board uh, wanted to move forward with and, and take advantage of. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Madam President, I have a motion. Yes, Jim. I move that we approve an authorizing resolution for the series 2014 general obligation refunding bonds as presented. Is there a second? Hey, majority second. Emma, thank you. Uh, any other discussion about this? We've had a lot of good information in the packet. So all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried, 7 0. Great, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. See thank you next you. time. Next, we have just a minute. Excuse me. I will get the hang of this any minute now. Okay, so now we have a lot of salary and work uh, conditions information from Aaron and apparently Shannon.
Good evening. Good evening. Um, as you all know, this summer we engaged in negotiations with our certified employees um, regarding their terms and conditions of employment, um, as we do every year. We, after uh, reaching impasse, did go to mediation and settled at that time on an agreement, which I'm here to present those changes to you today. Um, I'm bringing them to you for your consideration and for your action. However, any action, if you decide to take action today, will be um, contingent upon ratification by the NEA members. The vote opened, I believe, last yesterday, last night, um, usually runs uh, for about a week. I don't have um, a firm end date yet, but um, we should have that answer pretty quickly. So the changes this year um, that are being recommended for the 2019-2020 school year are education movement on the salary schedule, single step movement on the salary schedule for years of service, an increase of $815 to the base salary, which would make that now $39,000, increasing the monthly employer paid health insurance contribution for the eligible employees of $15 up from 500, so up to 515 per employee. Then there were some changes to the negotiated agreement language itself. The first page that you see here uh, and you should have this in your packet, was to Article 1B um, regarding the duty day and planning time. We removed, as you'll see, there are two sections related um, that were in the negotiated agreement that have either expired or involve programs that are no longer in place. Um, and we increased plan time minutes of 10 minutes uh, a week for both high school teachers and elementary classroom teachers up to 245 minutes. We also made some changes to Article 1, Section C, um, amending the small group staff development days to allow um, their use <laughs> to allow for um, their use without <laughs> having to submit a building-wide proposal that would have to be voted down before the small groups could engage in that small group staff development. Um, the changes we made to that section uh, include additional language for that purpose, but also we um, rearranged the order so of the section itself to make it more, uh, to have it flow more with what we do in actual life. Any questions on that one? We also amended Article 2 regarding leave. There were some changes um, that just hadn't been made from the year before. For example, that discretionary was changed to PTO leave last year, but didn't get changed in the agreement itself. We added some language that says teachers may apply for PTO leave during the last 20 days of employment, but they have to state a reason for that leave and then the executive director of human resources will consult with the building administrator um, and then determine whether that leave should be granted. We also removed two days that were previously considered blackout days for people subject to the negotiated agreement. Um, there are two in the calendar, two teacher work days, traditionally at the, one at the end of each semester that do not involve student contact days, nor do they involve staff development. Uh, and we agreed to remove those as days that PTO could be used. So those, those days will be eligible for PTO leave, assuming the employment requirements have been met before that day. Any questions on that one? Okay, then we added, I guess it's at the bottom of this previous page, a section on administrative leave. Um, administrative leave is something that the district has used uh, a few times um, in the past to 
if, if there's a need, a need arises where there's a safety concern or an investigation or a, a claim of some situation that warrants further investigation, administrative leave is what we use to place the employee on leave, sort of get everyone um, settled so that we can do the investigation without, um, so we can just protect everyone involved. Um, both the employees, students, community members, whoever is part of the situation. Um, it just helps us keep everything stable while we check into what's happening and the association requested that we put that actually into the negotiated agreement and explain what we do in that situation. So that's what this language is. I do have a question. Sure. <clears throat> um, number two on that. Do we assume that the employee is notified in a meeting? Not always. The employee is not always notified that they're being placed on administrative leave in a formal meeting. Um, we do that because we, if we, sometimes if we had to wait around for people to attend a formal meeting, we might not be able to achieve that stability that we're looking for in the moment. We, do frequently ask preliminary questions at that time to even determine whether this is something that's even possible based on timing, that type of thing. Um, but at that point, um, we might ask a question regarding that and then place them on administrative leave because we decide that more information is warranted. I, th I think my question then relates to um, when does an employee know that he or she um, should, if he or she wishes, request a representative of his or her choosing? At the time, once someone from Human Resources or one of the building administrators says to the person, we're going to place you on administrative leave, that's at the point at which they are allowed to obtain a representative for that purpose. Okay. So there is a person-to-person -person contact Yes. First. There's always person-to-person -person contact, I'm sorry. Okay. I was thinking of a formal meeting where we have representatives involved and multiple parties. Right, but I was thinking of the initial, you know, do you receive, is it possible that they would receive something by email? Or no, anything? never. Yeah, it's always person-to-person. -person. It's always person-to-person. -person. Okay. Any other questions about that one? The next change regards um, special salary provisions in Article 3. This change was to, um, was made to just clarify and comport with our current practice. We added SLPs to the group of people, I believe last year or the year before, who would receive automatic placement uh, at Masters plus 60. I mean, at Masters Plus 30, um, we felt we needed to clarify that it's not, it's a school psychologist who has achieved the EDS degree and SLPs on the Masters Plus 30 column. The, the psych, school psychologists, the nature of the programs differ from program to program when they have obtained the Masters versus the EDS degree can be different depending on which program you attend. It is the EDS degree that allows um, this group to work for us as school psychologists. So we simply wanted to clarify that language in the agreement. What is an EDS? What does that stand for? Educational science degree, is that correct? Specialist. Specialist, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, the last language change we have for you is simply the removal of an expired section under uh, the retirement plan, which was the phase-out plan that had been in place, I think, since 2001 or 2002. It expired so this last year, so we are now removing it, recommending removal from the agreement. Any questions on that? Okay, so with that, it's our recommendation that you approve these um, changes for the 1920, 1919, 2019, 2020 salary 
uh, and work conditions for certified staff. Do I hear a motion about that? Madam President, I move that we accept all changes to the agreement with NEA. A majority NEA seconds. Slyer. Thank you. And uh, uh, Emma seconded. <laughs> can I interrupt for a minute? Yes. Can we, um, can we, um, I would suggest that we maybe amend that just a little bit because it needs to be pending um, NEA oh, no. Salina pending ratification. NEA, no. uh, okay. uh, acceptance, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank I you. Agree. Thank you. And Emma, you second, second that change, that yes. Um, any discussion on that? Uh, Madam, Madam President, Gary, my oh, wife, yes. as we all know, is a uh, teacher, so I will be leaving the room as we, uh, before we vote on this. So I want to just let you know. Thank you. Come back. All right, we have the motion on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried, 6-0. Uh, go ahead, Erin. Okay, now we move to the uh, recommendations for 2019-2020 salaries and benefits for the classified and professional technical staff members. As most of you are familiar with, we utilize the negotiations process with our certified staff um, as the springboard to increasing and changes in work conditions for the rest of our staff members. Um, for the classified employees and the professional technical employees, we're recommending that you add 2.13% to the base salary schedules, allowing for single step movement on that salary schedule and increasing the monthly employer paid health contribution to $515 per employee. What that means for you all is that um, we would add 2.13% to the base pay on the classified schedule, which would increase the, the base sell from $9.38 to $9.58. For professional technical schedule, it would mean increasing the base salary from $35,902.72 to $36,667.45. For the Head Start teachers, it would increase the base as it does with the certified teachers under the negotiated agreement from $38,185 to $39,000. And then additional groups who are not included on a specific salary schedule and a 2.13% increase would reflect, be reflected in these new hourly wages. Any questions on that? I'd just like to ask the superintendent, do we intend to discuss some of these um, schedules at a later time? Yes, per, per your direction during the um, board retreat, our special board meeting, um, we are going to prepare some information for you for further discussion on those salary schedules. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. We did uh, talk about what is a living wage in Salina, right. and we would like to be at that le that level. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead. Uh, is that so? All there with is that, there? we're making these recommendations that you approve these increases for the classified and professional technical staff as presented. Um, as presented. Okay. Do I hear a motion? On that one. Gary. Madam President, I move that uh, we approve wage increases for classified and professional technical staff as presented, allow for single step movement on salary schedules, and increase board contributions to health insurance to $515 per month. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Emma Doherty second. Emma seconds, and I know Madam Jim. President, yes, you. I'm going to remove myself for this vote because my spouse is an employee. Thank you. Come back too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have a motion on classified and professional technical staff. Um, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried 6 0. 
Thank you. Jim, come back. Uh, all right, uh, Ms. Wright, continue on. We move on to the 2019-2020 salaries and benefits for administrators. Again, we are recommending that you add 2.13% to the base salary, allowing for single step movement for uh, longevity purposes and uh, increasing the monthly employer paid health insurance to $515 per employee. Thank you, do I hear a motion on this one? And does anyone need to recuse themselves? <laughs> Uh, well, let me start with Emma no. here. Okay. Emma, you Madam President, I uh, make the motion that we approve the 2019-2020 salaries and benefits for the administrators as presented. Uh, do we need to read all the rest of that in that okay. motion? All right. Okay. Do we have a second? A second? Mm, uh, Nedra, seconds. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried 7-0. Next is for the staff handbook changes, Ms. Wright. Now we move to the support staff handbook changes. You were presented with this at the last meeting on July 9th. Our intent at that time was to make a recommendation to change a small portion of the language regarding uh, payout of vacation leave um, when an employee leaves our employment. Um, we're recommending that uh, you make that, allow that change um, crossing out employees who retire or resign and changing the language to employees who leave employment will be paid their daily rate of pay for unused vacation. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve the support staff handbook? Gabe. Move we approve the 2019-2020 support staff handbook as presented. Do I hear a second? Emma Doherty seconds. Emma seconds. Um, any discussion? You need to leave on that one too, Jim. I will wait for you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried, 6-0. All right, now for the Certified Teacher's Handbook. Right. The changes to the Certified Teacher's Handbook uh, for retired educators um, is what we're looking at at this point, and they mirror to the extent that the provisions within the Retired Educator's Handbook are the same provisions that are included in the negotiated agreement. The changes we're recommending are the same changes being recommended for that well you've just approved pending ratification for the negotiated agreement i do want to draw your attention to one different change there's one thing that's different um, with the retired educators which is under article two regarding leave in the top paragraph we inadvertently left in 20 last year, so we'd like to cross that out. It is when we changed to PTO leave, the maximum uh, was cut to 100 days rather than 120, and the word 20 didn't get eliminated last year. So we'd like to do that now. Um, but the change that I'm referring to is that uh, at teachers with 15 or more years of continuous service in the district shall receive compensation for days of unused leave at the rate of $25 per day. Previously, it had been $10 per day. That hadn't been changed in a while. We felt it was time to do that. Um, so that is the one change different and apart from that which remained to the negotiated agreement. Thank you. Madam President. Yes. I move we approve the 2019-2020 handbook for certified teachers, retired educators as presented. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Jim, seconds. Um, is there any discussion? I have a question. Is it just this applies to retired educators who came back and taught some more? Is Correct. That, this is what we're talking about. These All are right. people who have retired um, as defined by CAPERS. Um, have retired and are receiving um, contributions from the CAPERS retirement system, but they have chosen to go back to work and are filling really important roles <laughs> that we need here. 
um, for us despite their retirement. Thank you. Any other discussion? Then all in favor, raise your right hand. Uh, all opposed, same sign. Motion carried 7 0. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're Thank welcome. You. The next item on the agenda is the board representative appointments. Ms. Exline, would you like to talk about that? Yes. Each year at this time, we have to update who will be representing you on each one of the boards in the community. And so there is a list of proposed appointments in your agenda for your consideration. And if you approve of those, we would just need a motion um, to formalize that, please. Then do I hear a motion about the board representatives? Madam President, Nedra. I mo uh, move that uh, we approve the 2019-2020 board representative appointments as presented. Do I hear a second? Emma Doherty, second. Emma. Um, any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried, 7-0. Thank you. So next on the agenda is the discussion agenda and there is nothing on the discussion agenda. So the next item is school board reports and upcoming dates of importance. And the dates we have here are Tuesday, September 10th, the Salina Education Foundation Fall Breakfast at Salina Country Club at 7 a.m. Saturday, September 14th is the Teacher of the Year Luncheon at the Hilton Garden Inn at noon. And Tuesday, October 1st, KASB Fall Regional Meeting in McPherson at 5.30 p.m. Um, let's start with Gary for board reports. No report to make today. Okay. Jim? Madam President, I attended the KASB Regional Roundtable with several other members in McPherson. Uh, and then the uh, first day kickoff. For new or for the teachers coming back, that was a lot of fun having everybody there and enjoyed that. Thank you, Nedra. Um, I was happy to um, be today at the audit interview for our school district. Uh, that went very well, and I too was at district assembly. That was fun throwing out T-shirts. <laughs> Had a great time. Uh, also attended the final negotiations meeting. Um, I was at the board retreat. Uh, budget work session, and I was really happy to be able to attend the post-construction conference that Chris Upson led at uh, Central in the morning and South in the afternoon, and uh, got to be around the architects once again and the contractors once again, and that was a great discussion and, and had um, several groups of people, including the district members present and we took tours of the building and even <coughs> went so far as to project into the future what that may look like for our district <coughs> and I might add that Chris did an excellent job with that and um, it was great to see him again and tell him thank you for the beautiful job they did <coughs> thank you Gabe nothing to report Emma uh, went to the regional meeting in McPherson as well and to the uh, board retreat and to the district-wide uh, staff meeting at Central High. Uh, Carol. Attended all the meetings that the others attended, but <laughs> Gabe, we attended a CKCIE meeting. Oh. <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a month ago. ago. That's yes. why. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a couple of things from CKCIE. Mike uh, Lowers announced a new website after August 1st, www.305ckcie.com. I'm not sure how that differs from the other one. It may have just been reversed. Um, number of gifted students served by CKCIE has been decreasing over the past six years, in part because many school districts are doing a much better job of meeting student needs in the classroom. Gifted teachers are serving more as counselors than providers of programs. A job fair was held on 713, was highly successful. 21 paras hired at that time, um, although two resigned two days later. Oh. Um, <laughs> noted, please, considerable turnover in those positions. It's just really difficult, in part because the wage is low. 
Um, we have been talking about the difficulty in hiring new special education teachers. Very few individuals are coming out of college gaining such degrees. We all know that there's a shortage of teachers all the way around. We lost four speech language pathologists, hired three, and Mike had an interview on the 22nd. Don't know how that came out. Oh, ouch. So, missing that one. No show, he said, so. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, since the last board meeting, I sort of felt like it was all school board all the time. I uh, attended my first equity council meeting and we heard a presentation from the Salina Community Relations Division. I attended the Smoky Hill Education Service Center board meeting and the and a board member from Chapman, USD 473, was elected to, as the new president to that board. That's Brian Rock from Chapman. Uh, on July 3rd, um, Ms. Exline and Gabe and I all attended a KSB leadership training in Hayes. Um, also on that day I attended, I was interviewed by Salina Media Connection who is <clears throat> interviewing all of the school board candidates and well they have already and they're all posted on the Salina Media Connection website which is salinatv.org. The next three days after that I uh, attended a, a conference in Wichita that was a part of the, well, I've got to go because of the Salina Arts and Humanities, um, which invited me to attend. It was about incorporating the arts into social emotional learning in schools. And uh, at least partly because of that, I incorporated both visuals and music into my presentation at the All Staff Assembly. Um, on July 31st, I attended the Salina NEA meet and greet, and uh, then I attended the budget meeting with Lisa Peters and all the board meeting board members. On August 1st was the school board retreat um, and we had a really great discussion, a bunch of discussions there. It was a really good meeting. Um, I also attended the negotiation meetings and the mediation session and was happy to reach agreement on that. Um, on August 1st, I got to speak to all the new teachers, the brand new teachers in the district uh, at their orientation at Central. And on August 7th, I got to introduce the board members and speak to the staff at the All Staff Assembly, at, also at Central in the auditorium. Um, on August the 9th, uh, we attended the regional KASB meeting in McPherson. And I've been having coffee with some of the board candidates to talk to them about what they're getting into uh, if they get elected. And uh, finally this morning I was oriented into the Chamber of Commerce Board with Eric Brown. That's enough. Um, right now we have a superintendent's report, Ms. X time. Okay, well it has, it has indeed been a busy month and um, I, I wanna start by saying thank you for the amount of time that the seven of you spend supporting our schools. Um, it, it is amazing to me that um, what you do for us and so much of it goes unnoticed. So with that, we've been to many things together. I, I was able to go to the NEA Salina New Teacher event. That was a, a fabulous opportunity where NEA Salina um, hosted an event for our brand new teachers at um, Old Chicago. And so that was a really positive um, evening and, and fun. I have had several opportunities to address staff here in the last month. I did get to also speak at the new teacher orientation and at the all staff meeting I had a chance to visit with um, all faculty and staff there. I and will say Ms. Exline that I've had lots of feedback that the fact that you ended that early is quite uh, impressive to the whole <laughs> district. <laughs> I, well, I may have to plan more comments. I don't know. Um, I also had a chance to talk to the Heartland um, staff several days later because they weren't all in attendance at that back to school meeting. And so that was fun to be able to greet them. I had my first um, presentation on Friendly Fire, my first experience there. And um, a very positive conversation on Friendly Fire. And so I appreciate the interest in schools and being able to participate in that. 
And then the last couple days has been very exciting for me because I was able to attend multiple staff development sessions in buildings, um, lost myself a little bit in several of them and spent more time than, than perhaps I had intended. I also made it to several um, back to school nights last night where it was meet the teacher with parents and so that was fun. And then today I made it to 10 of the buildings. Um, I will plan to make it to other buildings tomorrow um, to make sure that I've been able to see um, students in action and boy our staff spent hours and hours and hours getting ready for students and we had such a positive kickoff to the year so kudos to our faculty and staff there thank you now we have several executive sessions that we need um, the first one is attorney client and I think we should start with about 30 minutes on that uh, do I hear a motion Move the Board of Education go into executive session at 550 for 30 minutes for the purpose of consultation with board legal counsel on matters which are privileged in the attorney-client relationship, which if discussed in open session would waive that privilege, and that the Board of Education reconvene into open session at 620 in the board conference room. Thank you. Do I have a second? A majority second. I'm a second. Uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried, 7-0. We'll be back uh, in session in the other room after that. 620. Best time filling our place. Well, I hope you are. I told you I was one and a half or two before those gentlemen did one. That's Jake Peterson. One of those questions. Okay. Paul Guy. I don't know the other guy. All right. He's a lawyer. I'm going to take my file. 